Hey there, and welcome to this piano tutorial on how to play Carol of the Bells. What we're going to do is start with our third finger, our middle finger, on C, above middle C. So it's this one right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to play C, B, C, A. All we have to do at that point is repeat it over and over. Just like that. So your first step is to see if you can do that a few times in a row. You might get a little mixed up. It's sort of like a tongue twister. It's the same thing over and over. But once you can do that, then we can talk about the left hand. So the left hand's quite simple as well. What we do is we take our left hand thumb to the note A. And you can do a higher up A, you can do a lower A, it doesn't matter. And we're going to walk down A, G, F. The full advanced version has a different second part to it that continues on after that, but for the beginner version it's totally fine to just do A, G, F, E over and over. Now for each one of those left hand notes, the right hand is going to play its pattern. Check this out. There's one time on A, one time on G, one time on F, one time on E. Then you repeat. You want to go twice through. At that point, what we do next is we take our right hand up from C to E. So I'm just going to move up a third from C to E right there, and I'm going to do a very similar thing, E, D, E, C. Okay? It's the same fingers, it's the same sort of melody, but it's just higher up on the piano. Watch this. Left hand stays the exact same. And we're going to repeat the same thing again. A little crescendo getting louder and louder, and that's when we go to the next part. Here's what we do next. We're going to start with our pinky up on a high A, and we're going to hit it in this rhythm. A, A, A. Then we're going to walk down. A, 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 G, F, E, E, E. So see if you can try that. A, 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 G, F, E, E, E. And pause the video if you need to. Then at that point, we're going to continue down to D with our thumb, and then cross over to C with our pointer finger, and then reposition back to D with our third finger. So there, I crossed over and reset. Check it out in context. A, 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 G, F, E, 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 D, C, D with my third finger. That's the toughest part. Once you're there, all you do is D, D, E, D, A, 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 A. Now watch it, before you try this part, watch it all in context because it makes it a little bit easier to see how it fits together. Check it out. A, 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 G, F, E, 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 D, C, D, 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 E, D, A, 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 A. And that's that entire part. So it's okay if that's difficult at first. But you can definitely do it. Just keep on practicing it. Take it slow. And if it's too difficult, slow it down even more. Now left hand, what we're going to do is we're going to switch from single notes like we did before. Now we're going to go and do chords instead. And the first chord we're going to do is something called A minor. That's where our pinky is on A. And we do a very basic chord shape, root, third, fifth, A, C, E. Alright, now we're going to do that A minor twice, so here's one time, here it is again, then we're going to switch to something called D minor, and the way we get that is we play A, D, and F. Okay, so my thumb has to come up a little bit there. Then we go back to A minor. All in all, the chord progression for this part is A minor, A minor, D minor, A minor. Now, the way it times up is we start together, and then we match up on E here. So you can practice that first part, it's all lining up, watch. Then once we go to the crossover to play D with our third finger, that's where the left hand changes to D minor, right there. And then we end on A minor. I'm going to play that again super slowly so you can see how that all fits together. That 
was the second section. Now let's go on to the third and final section, which is that ascending scale part. The way we do that is we're going to start with our thumb on E right above middle C. So in other words, I'm going to come down from where I was before. And then here I am coming down to E. Okay, once we're there on E, we're going to hit E, F sharp, G sharp, then, very important, we're going to cross under to A with our thumb. Then from there, it's smooth sailing, we just walk up to B, C, D, E, D, C. So I'm just going straight up and straight back down, there's no skips, watch it. Now once you can do that, we can talk about the left hand. So the left hand, what we're going to do is something called an E7. And the way we play an E7 is we're going to take our pinky, which was on A, down to G sharp. Then we're going to play a second with D and E. So all together it's G sharp, D, and E. That's our E7. Then we're going to switch it back to A minor, back to E7, back to A minor. The way the timing works is we start together with E and E7, and where it changes is right here on D. That's where it switches to A minor. Watch that again. At that point what I like to do is a repeat back to the first section, but this time with the left hand in octaves if you can. So instead of just A, G, F, E. We're going to do two A's, two G's, two F's, and two E's together. If that's too difficult, that's totally okay. You can just do single notes like we already did. But if you can do those octaves, it adds a little more power, a little more oomph, and it really drives home this ending. So let's see if we can try that. Watch. I'm going to repeat, just like before. Then up to E. start slowing down, end on A, and that's it. You can also jump down to a low A, you know, you could do, and have it sound really dramatic and dark there at the end. But yeah, essentially that's the entire thing. So at this point, if you need to, obviously go back and rewatch any section that you need to. But I'm going to play the entire thing so you can see how it all fits together. Check this out. There you go, pretty cool, right? So, if you practice it, you'll be able to do that too. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and drop a comment below about other songs you want to see me teach. Until next time, this is Corey Lennox for Piano with Corey. Piano on!